Thank you, Laurie Garrett from the Council. Uh, Mr. President, thank you very, very much for joining us today. We're deeply honored by your presence. The tragedy of 17 years ago, of course, did not remain confined to Rwanda and has spawned a, a whole chain of armies and militias in vicious combat across the entire region of the Great Lakes and down into the Democratic Republic of Congo. And now the Congo dispute is fueled by the precious resources, gems and metals that these bandits can extract from the ground to become the financing for their ongoing military disputes. Can you foresee a road to solving this, either through the AU or other means, and permanently disband these rival armies, bandit groups, militias, tribal groups, whatever you want to call them, so that the region has stability and Congo has some hope of becoming a stable state. Oh, let, let me make a clarification. Um, I understand what goes on in Rwanda is not just Rwanda's responsibility. Sometimes it goes beyond the borders and affects other people, and the other people have what they can do to deal with the situation and so on and so forth. The same thing happens even with the, the Congo, DRC, and probably much more so with the DRC because it's a very big country. What happens there does not only affect the Congolese, it affects nine neighbors, so affects the whole continent and beyond. And of course, it affects the whole world, actually, because the whole world is also interested in the Congo. Not only what happens there, but what they can do there, or what they have been doing there for decades and, and centuries. But the, 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 what I want to point out here is, however, sometimes I do not agree that the solution, say for Congo, uh, will necessarily always come from outside, or that it will come from Rwanda, <laughs> because sometimes the, the, it, is, it, it has that kind of connotation. What will deal with the problems largely in Congo, originating from Congo, is going to come from Congo. How does it come from Congo is, 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 is a very difficult f question for me to answer, because I cannot say or answer for Congo. The Congolese, Congo has its people. Congolese, the leaders, and so on and so forth. I think they have, as, as we struggle in Rwanda to deal with our own problems, I'm sure the Congolese must be struggling to deal with their own problems. So these tribal armies, different things that have, you know, some of which existed, by the way, for even before this tragedy of 1994. I don't know whether you, you would be aware of this. These militias, the people they called Mai Mai. Mai Mai, I, used, I learned, I read about Mai Mai in the stories of the of 60s, 1960s. These Mai Mai used to exist. They are linked with the different conflicts that took place in the Congo in different parts for different reasons, whether in the Katanga Wars and different wars that took place over the years or different uh, influences that played a role in what shaped Congo to be what it is today. But at the same time, we have the international community in the form of UN that has, for quite some time, uh, decided that they will 
do something about what happens in the Congo. They've been there. There has been a mission in the Congo for so many years, supported by the international community. Now, if they are there, they've been there for so many years, a very expensive mission, probably spending uh, close to a billion dollars every year. If this mission is there to do nothing and I have to be asked to give a solution to the problems of Congo, there is a problem. The international community or the UN or this mission that is there should be the one to tell the world what issues are on the ground and how to deal with these issues. But it doesn't happen, which is an indication that there is a serious problem. But they should be there to work with the government of Congo and institutions in the Congo to try and do whatever they can do to strengthen the institutions of Congo so that they can take on these challenges as Congolese and even if they were to get support from outside, but there is no way you can bypass the Congolese themselves like you wouldn't bypass the Rwandans in the Rwandan problem to deal with their problems. So I, I, I have no solution other than telling you that this is the problem, this is uh, what could possibly be done and by who. But whether that gets done to give the results that we all want, the stability in the Congo, the absence of these militias that uh, you, you, you talked about that have existed for more than 17 years, in, in actual fact, that, that's what I, I, I mentioned. For that to happen is a different matter. It has to be done, and we have then to see the results. But so far, we have had these 17 years, and we have continued to see these problems. And sometimes, because we address symptoms, and we are not addressing the root cause of the problem. Yes, when, when, when women in the Congo are raped, when children are killed, when there is this and that, it's not about minerals. <laughs> it's about governance gaps that are there. It's about the effectiveness of institutions, whether they are local or international, to deal with the very issues that could stop that. Subsequently, the, the, in a situation that is not properly governed, of course, there are these resources that everybody will help themselves to. The militias, the others, oh, but even others from outside the region. Yes, these, these minerals uh, are not just eaten like food, like you would smuggle maize and go and cook it and eat it. No, these are minerals that are processed, that go outside. So that have companies that invest there and get involved with this and so on and so forth. But because of lack of governance structures that are effective, even militias pass around and exploit these gaps that exist. Thank you, Mr. President.